All right, welcome back to the boys 161st Street. Another roll call episode. This one had to happen. This one had to be an emergency pod, another emergency pod, because arguably the best, biggest and best, I tried to mix the two words together, the biggest and best move this offseason had to offer. Yeah. And it went down today. It's kind of like DJ LeMayhew and then Garrett Cole last year combined. Yeah. The and hype, then, the hype of Garrett Day. Cole and DJ LeMayhew combined equal how excited we are for Darren O'Day putting on the pinstripes. The Sidewinder, nicknamed to be determined later, but just... The mustache, the Sidewinder, O'Day, O'Day. The everything, the, everything there is to love about the guy. So without further ado, let's talk about number, I think he's going to be 50. So that's a little bit of Darren O'Day highlights. For those of you watching on YouTube, the podcasts are now uploaded to YouTube. Every episode is going to be on YouTube. We tried to do the live stream. If you guys checked out the live stream, you probably realized that we had technical difficulties. We're figuring it out. We're going to get it ready by the start of the season and by spring training and all that. But little little teaser for you guys today, I guess. A little taste of what's to come. We're going to start streaming the episodes live. Every episode on YouTube, on Twitter, Patreon coming soon. But for the time being, they're all going to be uploaded on Twitter when we figure it out. And if you're watching on YouTube as well, if you want to see our beautiful faces, you'll also notice that Murphy is in the bottom right corner because his Wi-Fi sucks and he was the problem. He won't tell, <laughs> he'll tell you a different story, but that's how it went down. But Darren O'Day is a Yankee. Yeah. How are we feeling? I'm on top of the world for a lot of reasons. One, I think he's the perfect pitcher to come in and add to the rotation. Two, I think we're the reason that he's here. So those two reasons, I think that... He's our guy. I think we are officially denouncing the Tyler Wade fan club, and now we are starting the Darren Whoa. O'Day fan club. Yep. Hang on. Yep. Are we ready to denounce I the think Tyler Wade fan club? I, See, Murph I needs to be there. here for this. Because All right, that's... we'll put it on one episode hold, but let's just say the Darren O'Day fan club is forming, so that will be... Forming? Yeah, because he needs to... Oh, it's, it's already formed. formed. It's formed. It's here. He, but he needs it's to... He needs to We've mobilized. He needs to denounce the Tyler Wade fan club before we can start a new fan club. So he needs to denounce it first, and then we can start the Darren Day one up. It's a whole thing. It's a whole process. We got legality. It's a whole thing, but we'll get there. We, we'll get our legal, our legal team in touch with yeah. everybody. We'll, we'll, t- we'll accept applications in about a week. That's going to be one. That yeah. is. Just DM us to join the Darren O'Day fan club, but... Let's get into why we were actually so excited because it's like half a joke, half not. I think it started as a joke, but then we looked into it. It didn't start as a joke we because like, I wanted Whoa. him. Oh, you're so full of shit. 100% a joke. I don't think it was a joke. All right, so here's why I wanted Darren O'Day and what you guys could be excited for about Darren O'Day. If you do nothing about him, you either didn't play him will be the show or you are a regular person because he's not a very well-known player. So Darren O'Day, Sidewinder. That's it. No, but I'm kidding. He does. He's actually he had a very effective year last year for the Braves. Was it uh, Atlanta? He, yeah, he had a 1.1 ERA. Granted, like, through through 19 games, small sample size, but I mean, that's good. That's good. He's a sidewinder, and it's no secret that it's hard to hit. Whenever a sidewinder comes in the game, it's just like I mean, whenever we face one, I'd rather have one than face one and if we're facing one at least we have one to match so but like, again we're not we're not asking him to go out there and be like the you know, cover three innings and be like an all-star reliever like, no one's asking that out of the guy we're asking him to fill a role and be like a situational relief pitcher who can come in and give the hitters a little bit of different taste of you know a, a, uh, arm angle. Let's give the Rays. Let's yeah. give the Rays a taste of their own medicine. Their that's own that's medicine. where. Yeah. Okay, Chandler. That's where this idea stemmed because we were talking about it on the that's final right. on the off season episode. We were looking at potential moves for the off season, and Darren O'Day was first on my list. Is like okay. There's obvi- there's the obvious names and Liam Hendricks and Brad Han and other names, the bigger names like that, Kirby Yates, etc. But Darren O'Day, he fit the mold. The Yankees 
and this is before I even I even thought the Yankees were going to stay under the luxury tax. When it when it was reported that they're trying to stay under the luxury tax, it made even more sense because I was having in my in my off season plan I had him as like the second reliever we would add, but because like, he's so cheap. And I, I wanted to get like a Liam Hendricks or something because I was assuming we wouldn't have, you know, Kane Lee. We wouldn't have, I didn't even know we were going to trade out of, you know, but that plays into it as well. And now we're, we're at our strength and something we were pretty deep at. We're not deep anymore. It's yeah, uh, no. people have to get that out of their brains that we're deep. We still, even with the Darren O'Day signing, I think we should get another, another reliever. 100%. But yeah. the we reason why whatever we have left. Yeah. I'm the sorry. reason why I was saying that we should get Darren O'Day on top of that is because of the salary and now that we were staying under the cap once we found out that information i was like okay like he's actually gonna be a yankee if they have any brain this is like legitimately a good signing like it was a little bit of a joke because we were the only part about it that was a joke is that we were were making it seem like it's like a dj signing and like oh like he's the best he's like he's but replacing chat he, you know like... what it is though it's <laughs> extremely fun to see the two sides pan out like us predicting it because it's actually a smart signing is what it is. And then the Yankees doing it. So like, it's just a smart signing. That's all it is. It's a smart signing. Yeah. And like, I think that this came pretty, you know, pretty in line with the trading of out So you kind of have to look at it in a way of, we got rid of out and we're now kind of like replacing, replacing him with Darren O'Day. And if you look at it from that perspective, he is kind of the perfect guy to fill that role of a, a funky delivery guy who has a very, very set role out of the bullpen. Where would you I'm, slot I'm excited. him? Oh, sorry. Where would you slot him in the rotation? In the rotation, not rotation, the bullpen. What inning? Mm, Adovino uh, was technically supposed to be. Yeah, but Adovino the, the seventh because Britain will be the eighth. Chapman will be the ninth. At least to start Green. the season, who knows? I think I don't think he's again. Now. I don't think he's going to be like a. He's not going to be in the everyday coming out of the bullpen. You got to you got to also consider the fact that he's thirty eight years old. He's ending his career. Like well, see to that. I would say it th- I don't think his age really matters. And Murph was kind of talking about this before before his Wi Fi sh- bed. But um, you know, I don't think age for him is a huge factor. He's not a power pitcher. He's a finesse guy. You know, and but even with we're stamina. Talking- I mean, he's a, he's a reliever. He's not a starter. He's a reliever, yeah. So, I mean, I know what yeah. you're saying, but we, but we, were kinda, uh, we were comparing him to the money ball. They brought him into, you Chad know. Chad Bradford. Yeah, Chad Bradford. They brought him in. He's dragging his knuckles across the fucking dirt, throwing stuff like that, and he was effective. That's what we wanted, Darren O'Day. Something to mix it up, you know, something to change the eye level, all of that stuff that you want. It's It's not coming from velocity. It's not coming from the stuff that, you know, falters with age. So yeah, that's kind of why I'm excited about it. It's at a cheap cost. If he sucks ass, we lost $2 million. So what? Yeah, I, I think my, my point behind that was like, I don't think he's going to be, you know, last year we had or whatever year is we, is we had, we had, you know, Kane Lee, Adovino, Britton, Chapman, you know, that, that, that in that order every single time. I don't see him fitting into like a perfect situation like that. I see him coming in, you know, when we need an extra arm to fill in through the sixth inning or if we really need it in the seventh inning or if our bullpen's weak and we need another guy to kind of fill in the void of a seventh inning um, relief pitcher, like that's kind of where I see him coming in. Um, because when Adovino was in that role, he was really good, but obviously he didn't fill that role last year because he fucking sucked last year. So let me let me talk about Adovino for a second because this obviously it goes hand in hand and we haven't talked about this yet. Adovino gets traded and it it comes to no surprise. It's a little bit of a shock, but it makes sense. And here's why, because he was scheduled to make eight million dollars. Darren O'Day is getting two and a half. That alone, in terms of production, in terms of it just being a new face, because I think I think Ottavino will go to the Red Sox and he will be good. I think he will be yeah. effective. I think he will honestly do very well against us because we're a righty heavy team. Brett Gardner, who is currently not on the team, is like one of our only lefties. So when you think about that, we're, we're pretty much a righty only team except for Hicks. So I don't expect him to do bad. I think he's a great pitcher. I think, and people remember the bad parts of Adam Adovino and not the good parts. And a large por- part portion of his stay with the Yankees 
was good and he was super effective. We, he was one of our favorite pitchers. Talking about him being the closer early on in his time with us, him and Britain were more effective than, or we felt better. I remember way back when, check the tape, we were talking about like his leverage index was the highest with the yeah, Yankees. Yeah, like we were all like, those things. Yeah, we were we were so high on Avito because he was great. I mean, he was he probably should have been an All Star in 2019. So with that uh, being said, I just want side, I just want on. with that being said, I just wanted to say that. I don't think I, I still think it was a good move to get rid of him, and that is because the Yankees lost faith in him. And if you lose faith in a guy, and they weren't even using him, he's getting eight million dollars. Like, give him to somebody else. The Red Sox still stink, so who cares? And Adam, Adam, Adam Onovino is not going to take them over the top to beat us in a nineteen games nineteen games in in the in the year. We're still going to dominate them. We're still going to shit on them. They got to score runs to beat us, and they won't. Uh, their offense is decent, but that I digress. I just think the relationship with Boone and whoever was putting him into situations like we weren't putting him in and when we did put him in he was in for a batter and then he gets pulled three batters minimum whatever it's going to be he's just he wasn't going to be used next year and if that's the case don't don't pay him eight million dollars get somebody get new blood in the system and that's that get new blood and if he does if he doesn't end up being great no risk, and you're also getting, for the price of him, him and somebody else that we spend $5 million, which could be a deadline deal, but, you know. Yeah. I mean, again, I, again, I kind of want to – I don't want to compare them exactly, but I just want to say that Darren Day had a – I don't going to say war right now, but Darren Day had a .7 war last year, and out of you know, had a negative .1. So, just saying. Maybe not, maybe it's an upgrade, maybe Whatever. not. We'll see. It means probably absolutely nothing. Whatever to that stat. That means absolutely nothing. That's just, a whatever stat. That is a whatever stat. But I'm just throwing out stats out there. The stats whatever. that uh, just to kind of keep kind of intrigue me is postseason stats. He got 30 appearances in the postseason, which I had no clue considering he's played for the Orioles and the Rangers for most of his career. So kind of surprising. But I mean, he's not great in the postseason. But he's got 30 appearances with a 4-4 ERA. So, and I mean that's just. Reliever I mean, ERA his... also doesn't matter, by the way. Exactly. That's the product because of giving When you look at Adovino, speaking of exactly. Adovino, when you look at him, he had the 90% of his outings in the years he's been with us were no no hits, no runs, no nothing. And then he has one where he gives up six in no batter's face, and then it blows it up to a 27 ERA. Oh, no, I, so don't, I agree. Yeah, I don't want to hear like, about reliever ERA. I'm just, it's a decent like snapshot of like, okay, this guy's like not a bad postseason. Yeah. If he had like a... I'm just saying I'm not, the other reason I'm not is, saying it's the end all be all. It's not like this is the most telling stat in the world, but it's it's a a positive sign. The other he also did spend seven years in Baltimore, so <laughs> not a lot of playoff opportunity there. <laughs> well, no, they they were good at that time, weren't they? Yeah, that was when uh, that was they, when Chris Davis could hit a baseball. So that was Adam before Jones he got to do anything. Yeah, I guess, but I'm just saying the teams he's been on, I guess has Nelson a lot Cruz of was on that team, wasn't he? Yeah, I guess he he was on Atlanta last year too. Oh. So he's been on good that teams. Seems, I guess yeah, I take I take that back a little bit. So I I like seeing that because he's been on effective teams and now he's got a. I I think he's he's that pitcher we need to just be like that funky guy that wild thing that just comes out of the bullpen like just I don't know I I, I just I'm very excited about Darren O'Day. You can't take that away from me. The other thing the other thing I really like you about you can't him, take that away from me. I'm not taking anything away from you. Don't take it away. from I'm me. I'm not taking it away. I'm over there. I called this. You did call it. I'm not gonna take. I'm putting that on my resume. By sure. The way. Yeah. Go for it. Whatever makes you happy. I quit your job tomorrow. Something <laughs> like that. Up there. Bad Go. day at work. So it's I'm I'm, I'm close. I'm close. <laughs> Today the, sucked. The other thing before Luke gets fired. The other thing that I really like about Darren Day is he doesn't walk a lot. Doesn't walk a lot of people. He goes uh, right at them, and he makes so them. It. He makes them miss. Makes them ground out, and that's a good pitcher that we need that fits into a the Yankee Stadium. Total one eighty from Adam Adovino. Total one eighty. Total. He uh, um. Total career career averaging one eighty. Career averaging. Darren Day has um averages half as half as many walks as Adam Adovino. Adovino couldn't put anything near the plate like he actually like when you walk the base is loaded and then walk in a run like come on now like he actually was trying to take some off and put it over the plate and just physically could not yeah. that's what i like that is the one thing that i will say about out that i hated i i do i and i don't want to shit on out because i really liked him 
But that I didn't, I could never, I, like they, they taught us that in Little League, like just let them hit it. You got fielders behind you. You can't even, if you walk in a run or walk the bases loaded, you're not even like leaving it up to chance. You're just giving them runs. Like that's why it's the most irritating thing in baseball. Like yeah. you're just walking people. Walking it's one the worst or two, thing in the world. walking it's one the worst or two, fine. But like consistently going out there, and I know you're gonna walk at least two guys on. That you can't have that. Yeah. You can't. You're not gonna win games like that. And it showed. The the other thing that I'm gonna say about him, and supporting the fact that supporting what Bing you said earlier about his age not being a factor, which I agree with now. Age is just a number. Dude. Age is just a number. And I know ERA with relievers doesn't really mean a lot, but. Looking at a couple of a couple of his other stats, like for instance, home run per nine innings, he's gotten better every single year since his career started thirteen years ago. Keep it in the ballpark. Keeps it in the ballpark and gets better through with age. Like he's it's he's not line. trying to um like he's he's a he's adapting as his career is going on. You know what I mean? Survive like, in advance. All these important stats are going are getting better and better and better as his career is going on. So since he's when are you the stat guy? Because Bing isn't doing it, so I got to do it. I don't know. Well, Bing moved into this role because Murphy is a you – know, hold on. So Murphy is just like the, the – He's cave. the worst. For those of you listening, which is uh, hopefully a lot of people, uh, Murph lives in a cabin in the woods. No, he doesn't, but he lives basically in a I mean, cabin in the woods. He might as well live in a cabin. He lived in an RV woods. for like two months one yeah. time. Not because he's like it was outside of his not because house. he couldn't like because he, he wanted, wanted to. to. <laughs> so that'll that'll tell you a little bit about our friend Murphy. So he'll be back next episode, hopefully, uh, if he figures out his Walmart brand Wi-Fi. Anywho, what are our expectations for Darren O'Day going into this year? And don't give. I'm not saying over under ERA. I'm saying where do we slot him into this bullpen? I'm gonna I, give I just, you my my best case scenario. In realistic case scenario, best case scenario, he comes out and I think he's kind of what we're all expecting, just an innings eater, somebody to clean up the mess, like nothing crazy. And he kind of evolves and develops into a guy that we can trust late in games to get out of like a first and third jam, something like that. He can come in, get a big strikeout because that funky ass arm slot. I think more realistically, he's just going to be an innings eater. He's going to, you know, give us solid innings, nothing crazy. He's not the guy that I want there in a meaningful game with the game on the line. But I think he's going to be good enough to where I'll trust him to hold a decent lead and to get us to our big guys. Yeah. I I just have a lot of faith in him. And I do think, I do think that he could potentially be, I mean, when you look at this team and you look at the makeup of our rotate, our bullpen, I get those two things mixed up all the time. The bullpen is, I mean, obviously, Chapman is the closer. A lot of people want him to be the not the closer or whatever. Chapman's going to be the closer for at least this start. We'll see. He's the closer, though. Uh, then you got Britton probably in the eight-inning eight, eight inning spot. Chad Green also could be in the eight-inning spot. I don't really care between the two, but Britton was very effective. Anywhere, Chad, Green, Chad Green is – he's weird for me. He's, like, either the best he's pitcher so on our down. team. He's so up and but like he, he, he's not like inconsistent each start. He either gets on hot streaks or cold streaks. So yeah, I feel like I, he I was, has like two bad ones a year that just like make us all hate him for a week or two at a time, which for a reliever is a shitload, and then the rest of it is just lights out. Yeah, so I would probably put him. I mean, the majority of our starters aren't going to go more than like five innings, and because I mean, when you look at Garrett Cole, is probably the only one who can go deep into ball games, and then you look at I mean. Corey Kluber, he's dealing with the age thing and the injury thing, so he's probably not going to go deep. Then you got um, Debbie Garcia, even the young guys. Like, who knows? He's he, not yeah. If he's in, if he, is he in the rotation number one? Can he get deep into games because he's young? That's a big thing. Jordan Montgomery might be the only one who can actually eat innings, but he also doesn't go. He's not notoriously known to go deep into ball games either. Though. And he's dealing with his injury a couple of years ago. I, 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 have, I have faith in Montgomery. We'll get into him on his roll call episode. But like I'm saying, like I think if Darren O'Day slots into like that six inning spot, like early departure from starting pitchers. I think that's that's what he'll be. Yeah. Or, or I mean, with the three inning three batter minimum rule, you know, you, you can't really be like the the specialist anymore, which he would have fit nicely in. But yeah, listen, I I've, think he'd be like the six inning cleanup guy, extend the game. That that's his role. Yeah, which is big. That's a big role. And I think that's like a, game that's a good place to at least start him out on. Like obviously the 
the bullpen rotation um, changes throughout the year based on how everybody's doing. So I think like putting him in that six, uh, six inning role is like a great place for him to kind of start out. And, you know, we don't, we don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. Um, you know, a young guy like a Debbie or a Clark Schmidt, like they could even get some bullpen reps or something like that. Like we just don't know what's going to happen, but I think that O'Day is going to have like that six inning role, like I said before, and hopefully he does well. And hopefully we don't need to go to fucking Lawizga to rely on for closeouts. Enter the Michael Scott. No, God, please. No, <laughs> no, no. Is Jonathan Holder? No. I hope not. I was actually just talking about Jonathan Holder with one of my friends the other day. Well, he was Darren pretty good. Number 56. Time. Yeah, he was pretty good, but I still have no faith in him. I was, I was he's number 56, so I hope he's not week. on because I want Darren O'Day to be as comfortable as possible because that's his number. I agree. I'm hyped for him. I'm so hyped. I, am too. I would say, we could say about him. the best pitcher acquisition since um, CC Sabathia. <laughs> Arguably. No, but I, I actually am about him i think he's going to be a really good a really good piece to this team especially with all the people we've lost between canely and Ottavino and apparently i'm gonna assume holder's gone even though i think he yeah. is but fits the just role well on. fits the role well yeah. i think yeah, exactly. there need there there still needs to be more moves uh but I agree. but 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 I, I i really hope it's not gone it's a great honest. addition it's a great i think last thing i'll say it's a great addition i'm super stoked about it we called it and if he does well, then everyone owes us something. You if guys, we're allowed you guys to all owe us a review on the oh, good segue. Leave us a review, five stars. Swipe down, please. Just because we called it, we called it. We like called we're it. we're give, we're making this team a team, and we also some credit. I, I did tweet like for those keeping score at home. Yeah, everything that we have said on this podcast has come true. That, okay, we've said a, f- a few other things that. Didn't really, but like the ones that we actually put pen to paper is like, I want this to happen. I want DJ to come back. I want Corey Kluber and I want Darren O'Day. Those are the three that we put our nuts on. Like we wanted those. I don't know if that's a saying, but we wanted them. Make we, a saying. We put it all down. Those are the ones we went all in on. Like if these three things happen, I'm cool with the off season along with other accessory moves. But that's why I think this solidified this off season as Cashman having a very good off season. I think, I think this is a very good off season. And if we're not going to go over the luxury tax, which I, I'm still not convinced we're done there, but we still have a couple, not, couple left to spend. We, we also, for those of you listening now, we're releasing this. It's Thursday morning. Hopefully if you're listening to it, that's when you should be listening to it. Uh, we have the Jameson Tyone JMO episode coming out soon after uh, we break him down a lot, but that, that, all those moves coming together. I'm very happy with this team, and I am ready to have my heart broken. <laughs> I'm fully invested in this season. I'm finally ready to get hurt again. I'm ready to get hurt again. I've hit my annual point of getting over the loss from the year before that eliminated us, and now I'm irrationally confident. Like I, I'm back to my 162 and 0 grind. Like I'm 100 yeah. <laughs> percent sure that we are not going to lose a game. Yeah, these guns, Chandler. That's I, I, I mean. After the after the podcast, I can't look at that right if now. If you want to see the guns, check out the YouTube. Because if you want to watch the podcast on YouTube, I got the pipes out. All right, don't, don't, don't watch this. it at work. This is not a safe for work podcast. Now we could do an ASMR. Now we have to podcast. market as over eighteen to watch the episode. <laughs> All right, leave us a review. Subscribe to the YouTube. Let's Bye. Go Yanks.